Hey, Josh here, founder of HR University and certified HR professional. In today's video, will be about how important the role of a chief human resources officer is in a company. For companies, managing human capital is a challenge. And research shows that the role of the CHRO or HR function in general is undervalued. But this has to change. CEOs need to work closely, not only with the CFO to manage financial resources for the success of the company, but also with the CHRO, especially because people are the company's greatest assets. A company doesn't create value on its own, your people do. So just as the CFO works with the CEO to raise, manage, and allocate financial resources, the CHRO's task is to build the pool of talent and make sure to utilize and maximize the potential of their human capital. The Chief Human Resources Officer, or sometimes referred to as the VP of HR, works closely with the CEO to lead the company alongside other C-level execs, so this role has very minimal administrative tasks. The CHRO's focus is more on strategic tasks, which can be summarized into five key roles. First is to be a human capital expert. Second is to be the talent strategy creator. Third is to be the change management leader. And the fourth is being the culture and purpose driver. Then the last is to be a trusted counselor. Let's discuss each role in more detail. What does it mean to be a human capital expert? Being a human capital expert means you're the board's leader of human capital, that you're in charge of the CEO succession plan. You work closely with the board to oversee a comprehensive CEO succession plan, which includes identifying, developing, and evaluating potential successors up until the onboarding of the candidate to ensure a seamless and orderly change in the company's leadership. Being a human capital expert also means developing a pay for performance compensation program that aligns with both the shareholders' interests and the company's internal strategies and priorities. And of course, as a human capital expert, it's also just as necessary that the CHRO monitors external influences on the company's strategies and performance on a regular basis in relation to the company's human capital management. The CHRO should be able to anticipate whatever these external influences are and be able to develop strategies in response to these as well. And the second key role is being the talent strategy creator, which means that the CHRO should be the one to identify the most critical roles needed to achieving the company's strategic goals and be able to proactively manage pipelines and successions for these roles. Aside from being able to identify these roles, the CHRO must also ensure that the design of the talent management process is based on established techniques and best practices to ensure flexible and future-focused approaches to recruit and grow talent. Third here is the CHRO is a change management leader. As the work environment is constantly changing, the CHRO should be the first person to acknowledge this and be able to lead the adaptation in order to manage that change. And the work is not simply just acknowledging it. The CHRO should also be able to anticipate it and thoroughly plan how the company will respond to these changes by deploying necessary resources and staff. All of these are done while considering the company's culture, strategy, and priorities. Moreover, the CHRO must also recognize and confront the company's existential threat of complacency by challenging the way work is done and suggesting new procedures, structures, and people that are better suited to capitalize on future endeavors and opportunities. The CHRO should be the person in the company to challenge the status quo. And the fourth is being the culture and purpose driver. In the absence of a director of people, the CHRO can also be in charge of identifying and defining the organization's purpose, vision, and mission within a broader developing social context with the CEO. The CHRO also champions the company's culture and holds leadership accountable when they fail to walk the talk. The responsibility of making sure that business operations, decisions, and processes adhere to the promised culture is in your hands, and when they don't align, the CHRO takes necessary measures to reconcile the two. Last, but just equally important as the first four roles is to be a trusted counselor. First to the CEO, the CHRO should be able to provide honest and candid advice that incorporates different perspectives and be willing to face the CEO with difficult truths if it is in the company's best interest. Related to being the first key role of being the human capital expert, the CHRO also works with the rest of the C-level execs in keeping an eye on the senior team's cohesion and performance, identifying if there are underdeveloped talent, and ensuring that there is ultimately a plan on how to maximize the team effectiveness, especially 
for those emerging leaders within the company. Now you see that the role that the CHRO plays in the company is just as important as other C-level executive functions. So it's right that the CEO gives equal importance to human resources. Now let's find out what the requirements and qualifications are to become a CHRO. Well, traditionally in terms of education, a CHRO needs to have a bachelor's degree in human resource management or related field. Most have their MBA or MAMS as well. For experience, I would say about a minimum of 15 years of HR experience is common with at least five years of those as executive HR. Some would even bring an international HR experience with them and all those certifications are required. Having one can be a significant advantage when applying for the position. Studies have shown that HR professionals have at least one certification, much more so when you're a CHRO or VP of HR. These certifications, of course, can increase your chances of securing the position as some companies really take a look into and consider these credentials as an advantage. In addition to this, CHROs often start as a recruiter or an HR generalist and work their way up the corporate ladder until they achieve that top position. But it's important to note that this career path, however, is fast changing. Many CHROs are now hired with little to no HR background, instead bringing very diverse skills and their own leadership and business skills from other verticals, whether that be legal or compliance. And if you're aspiring to become a CHRO in the future, yet you don't feel like you have the necessary background in human resources, don't stress. There are a lot of helpful resources online that can help you here. For example, over at HR University, we have lots of HR related content, just like this video, as well as certification courses to really take your knowledge to the next level. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel and feel free to comment below with any questions that you may have and we'll go ahead and answer them. With that said, we'll see you in some of our following videos and I wish you the best in your HR career. Cheers.